It's a new month and that means new books, one of my favorite things. So I have, I think, uh, five? Five books that I wanted to share with you that are coming out this month and that I'm excited about that are on my TBR. And that's really the only introduction we need. So let's go ahead and jump into this thing. First up is a book gifted from the publisher, The Art of Noticing, 131 Ways to Spark Creativity, Find Inspiration, and Discover Joy in the Everyday. This book, I've already started reading it. As you can tell, I'm doing this thing in the mornings for the couple, I don't know, last week and this week, where I'm reading from three books that are kind of centered around like mindfulness, self-development, and just like the art of paying attention, which is really what this book is about. And frankly, this book is incredibly, I don't know, man, it's getting the juices flowing in my brain. Like it really does spark creativity because all art is really at its core is seeing things in a different way, taking note of it, and then making use of it, expressing it in some way. I'm finding this way more productive than a lot of books, like a lot of writing template books or stuff like that. This is more about teaching yourself to pay attention. It has fun little exercises in it, and I'm probably going to do a couple of blog posts sharing my experience trying some of them, which should be pretty fun. But yeah, already recommend it. I don't see how it's going to change in my mind from the remaining pages, but yes, very, very good. If you're a creative person, go for it. It came out May 7th. Next up is another May 7th release, The Daughter's Tale. This is another World War II era historical fiction by a best-selling author who I've never read before, but she wrote a book called The German Girl that was pretty popular. I don't know if you've read it, let me know. This is centered around a small village in France and it's inspired by a real conversation that the author had with a real Holocaust survivor. And I'm hoping that the fictionalized version will be a fantastic read that will inspire a lot of people. I'm hoping that it's good. I know that her previous book was a bestseller, so hopefully this one will be just as successful and I'm excited to try it out. I seem to be getting a lot of World War II novels this year. Interesting? No? Just me? Okay. Next up is Disappearing Earth. This is a book set in one of my favorite places for things to be set, which is Russia. I'm obsessed with Russia. It's no secret, man. It's just a fascinating history, a fascinating place with a lot of different intersections of cultures and beliefs and just a very tumultuous changing history so I can't help but sort of be fascinated by it. This is a book about two girls who go missing and it's supposed to be like an interesting um, format where every chapter isn't really a chapter it's more like a section kind of like a compilation of short stories but not really about a bunch of different women in the village where this took place. It sounds like honestly one of those things that is either going to be really amazing and, and really hit home for me or going to be one of those things that's hard to read. I have no idea but I'm willing to take the gamble and I'm hoping that it's good. Next is a May 28th release from Scribner. This is one of the most buzzworthy books of the summer, of spring, or whatever you want to call it. The sort of like May, June books. I'm seeing a lot of people talk about it. It's supposed to be amazing and incredible. Now, of course, the hype is not always a guarantee, right? So I'm trying to go in with just an open mind. This is more about like family connections and generational connections and viewing your childhood from an adult's perspective and how things shift for you over time. It's kind of a love story about these two kids who were neighbors and fell in love and about the family dynamics going on between their parents. So I'm hoping it's good. This is not the type of book that I always pick up because sometimes family sagas are just like too much drama for me, but when they're really, really well done, then I can't help but fall in love with them. And if it weren't for the incredibly high ratings or high hype around this, then I probably would have declined it, but I just couldn't resist because it just sounded interesting, you know what I mean? So let me know if you've heard of this or if it's going on your TBR, if you're curious about it. It definitely has a very striking cover, which, you know, we can never say no to. And lastly is a book from Richard Roper, who I was lucky enough to meet and chat with a bit at a Putnam Presents event here in Washington, D.C. It's How Not to Die Alone. It's never too late to start living. The reason I was interested in this was, again, it's not something I'd probably pick up because of the description, but just meeting Richard and getting to talk to him a little bit and hear him sort of present his book and pitch it a little bit. He had just a natural way of storytelling in the way he talked. He's also an editor turned writer so I'm curious to see his own style sort of come to life and how that transition happened for him and how it translates in his book. Richard said at the event that the idea from this came from an article he read about people whose job it is 
to sort of take care of the effects of people who have died alone, who don't have any family to come and sort of take care of things. So he read that article and kind of got inspired and came up with this story, which is about a guy named Andrew who has been working a public health job for ages. He kind of feels like it's like a thankless existence and he's just not very happy. But instead of conquering whatever it is that's causing his unhappiness, he decides to sort of lie about the reality of his life. He tells his coworkers that he has a whole family to go home to and sort of just completely BSs his way through his professional life, lying about his personal life. But then this woman named Peggy comes into the office and it's for the first time Andrew feels kind of alive just looking at her, just meeting her. But as time goes on, obviously he realizes that he can't keep living in this white lie he's been telling forever and he has to decide if he's going to conquer his fears and confess to everything or if he's just going to stay in his humble little lie-filled cave of a life that he's created for himself. I'm hoping that Richard Roper's humor that came across in person also comes across in his writing and I also want to say great cover design and we'll see what happens. I'll let you know. Those are the five books on my TBR for May. I'd love to hear about one of yours, even if it's not a new release. I still want to know because I love talking to you guys. You're so freaking fun. I'm so lucky to have comments to chat with you guys with. And if you liked this video, do me a huge favor. Just give it a quick thumbs up before you head off to watch the next one. Drop me a comment below. And if you're new here and you haven't subscribed yet, but you like all things bookish, book reviews, hauls, TBRs, all the good bookish stuff, then I'm your girl. So go ahead and press that subscribe button and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye guys.